So, one last time, the final anime recommendation for 2017. Because next time we talk about anime, we'll be talking about the winter season in 2018. Yes, it's kind of confusing. But not that much if you pay attention to it. But anyway, yeah, last time, let's talk about the anime for this season. The anime that I recommend that are currently airing. Or at least the anime that I find interesting enough and watchable enough that I kind of want other people to watch them. Or at least, you know, people who ask me, hey, what anime are you looking for? Are you watching this season? Here you go. So without further ado, let's get into this, shall we? So let's start this all off with a series that a lot of people have been looking forward to. The critically acclaimed The Ancient Magus' Bride. The story follows, and again, forgive, forgive pronunciations, Hattori Chise, a young girl with no hope left in her life. Her brother and father ran off and her mother committed suicide. And her remaining family members sold her off into slavery. So, it's been a pretty shitty life so far. But, while being sold off as a slave, she ends up meeting Elias Ainsworth, the titular ancient magus. He buys her as his bride, but not for any particularly romantic or sexual reasoning. He really just finds her fascinating and wants to develop her magical ability because she has enormous magical potential. Overall, while the premise doesn't blow me out of the water, I've kind of seen stuff like this done before in a lot of series, especially targeted towards women, where it's like, oh, my life is so poor and tragic, then this beautiful, handsome guy shows up and makes everything better. And then the sensitive part is the fact that the characters are all really so well written. Chise herself is a pretty interesting character, and Ainsworth is very entertaining. He comes off sort of like, he comes off more fatherly than as a husband to her, which is kind of weird considering the fact that the title, series is titled Ancient Magus' Bride, but either way. Also, I will praise this series for its amazing visuals. The manga itself is also pretty well drawn, but the anime has re is really beautiful at points. I will praise Studio Wit for all their effort in this series. I know there are some OVAs that exist that technically should make this classified as a season two, but the OVAs are a prequel series to explain some stuff about Chise before the series starts up. And I have no word on if they're actually canon or not. So yeah, overall, this is a unique world with great visuals and interesting characters. So if you're interested, so if you're looking for some something beautiful to watch, and I highly recommend this one. Nisio was seen, and if, and if I didn't say that right, again, I for, forgive the pronunciations, is a very prolific writer in Japan. He has not only a Badaka box, a manga that went on for, I think, over 200 chapters, uh, but he also has the Monogatari series, which is a very well-loved anime and light novel series behind him. And I'm also surprised it took two years before an anime studio snatched up to write the one of his more recent works to make another anime. But here we have it with... Junai Tyson, and again, forgive pronunciation, but I prefer this alternate this alternate title of the Zodiac War anyway. In this world, every 12 years, the world's deadliest mercenaries and warriors come together, each one having the attributes of one of the 12 beasts of the Chinese Zodiac, and they're going to compete in a Junai Tyson tournament, where only one winner can survive. Each competitor having their own reason to fight, the Zodiac War begins yet again. Honestly, I kind of love this setup. It's sort of like Game of Death scenario, but we get to see a little peek into every character's heads. We get to see why they're fighting, what they're up to, as well as the overall plan to succeed. You kind of end up rooting for everyone to win at one point or another. Despite some of them being truly awful people, you can kind of understand where they come from as people. Honestly, I just love a good battle series, and this one has the makings of a great one in it. Again, each of the characters is interesting with Nisio seeing his character writing on full display with a bevy of interesting powers, such as a, such as Boar, who basically she uses giant machine guns and doesn't need to reload them at all, and Rabbit, who's a necromancer. Again, these don't really relate to their 12, the 12 Chinese Zodiac 12 Beast thing, but it doesn't really have to, which kind of threw me for a loop at first, but honestly I really appreciate it and enjoy. Overall, if you're looking for an enjoyable action series, then this is probably possibly one of the best ones of the season. Let me preface all this by saying, Jose series aren't really my forte, but from my experience, Jose anime have all been 
pretty interesting. Often having unique settings or unique characters to them, focusing on the older audience, that set them apart from the crowd when it comes to regular anime. For example, Princess Jellyfish, which is pretty good. Anyway, let's talk about this series, Recovery of an MMO Junkie. Moriko Moriaka, and I really hope I pronounced that right, as I really love her name, it just flows so easily. Anyway, she has recently quit her job and decided to become a neat, dropping out of reality and deciding to spend her time just playing online video games. And when her favorite game has been shut down due to her being too busy to work, with her, I mean, not really, her not realizing because she's been too busy at work, she tries a new one and makes a male PC, but of course struggles at first because she's a newbie. She meets another player named Lily who helps her out and teaches her the ropes of the game. Eventually, the two become closer, and Hayoshi, I think that's how you pronounce it, ends, who's her male PC, ends up joining Lily's guild along with her other guildmates, and they form a close group of friends. However, in the real world, Moriko, while out buying booze and snacks to sustain herself, accidentally runs into a young man who starts to develop an interest in her. As who starts to develop an interest in her. I'm going to be honest, I like this series mainly for the point where it focuses on online relationships over the whole real world plotline. The romantic plotline is pretty nice and sweet and nice and all that stuff, but I do more like the online plotline better, as it focuses a lot on how people relate to each other while playing a video game in groups, and it just seems realistic, more, way more realistic than EA's, than like, than like an E3 press conference that's supposed to be showing you, oh, this is how the game is played, and they're talking like all this. No, no, like, players are mostly just going to be ripping on each other, making jokes and comparing armor. And that's what the guys in this in this series do. Oh, guys, uh, a lot of them aren't really guys, but that's beside the point. Ultimately, the romantic plotline is secondary to the plotline of the online friendships, and that's what I'm really here to see. Aside from that, the series is pretty entertaining, but Moriko's flailing about as she reacts to various things, being very funny as well as being cute to me. Honestly, I just like her designs and need it's very cute. So, Dai's Aria, and if I pronounced that wrong, please forgive me again, pronunciation, but this time it's German, not Japanese. Which doesn't make it any better, but I still can't pronounce jack shit in it. Anyway, this is an anime based off a visual novel, which isn't unusual, a lot of anime are based off visual novels, but this one is a point of much confusion. You see, this is a series that was created via crowdfunding, and honestly raised quite a bit of its original goal. Quite a bit more of its original goal. I think its original goal was around 30... like 30,000, 300,000 yen, and it raised about 9,300,000, 300, which is, again, very impressive, which tells you how much fan love this original novel had. Anyway, that, it raised all that money, on top of that it has the original scriptwriter of the video game working on it, so what could it possibly go wrong? I say as the Bubsy game has recently come out at time of recording, and that's not a good omen for that phrase. Anyway, let's talk about this plot, shall we? In 1945, in the midst of World War II, a group of Nazi officers performed some kind of magic ritual. No one knows if they managed to succeed or not, but in the modern day Japan, Ren Fuji begins to have various nightmares about a guillotine killing him, or various murderers, and black clad knights who pursued these said murderers. With more and more oddities popping up across the town, Ren must cross the boundary into the extraordinary to protect his peaceful days. Honestly, the setup is pretty interesting, and the character designs are, again, very great. But. Before you watch the series, I'll give you all the same warning that I kind of wish I heeded before I watched it. Of course, I didn't get the warning until after the episode came out, but anyway, do not watch episode zero before you watch the series. I know that sounds confusing, but trust me, take my word from it. I looked it up, and episode zero is based off a scenario that you unlock after you've already beaten the game. As such, it's an event that you need the context of the game to understand. So what I'm saying is, then this episode, I know chronologically it takes place late before the events of the series, but it's still being here while not adding anything to the overall story is just 
confusing and confounding. And honestly, a lot of people hated this episode and were doubting the series because of this episode. So yeah, do not watch episode 0, move on to episode 1, and then once you're done with the series, come back and then watch episode 0 because you'll have full context then. Still won't help the odd pacing episode 0 has, but the series is better pacing than that. So yeah, the series itself, pretty good. Episode 0, not so much. Let me ask a serious question really quickly. What is with this year in series based on light novels that are about light novel writers who want to bang their sister? I mean seriously, first we had Iro Manga Sensei earlier this year, and now we have this series, A Little Sister is All You Need. Eh, dear god, why? Well, I'm recommending this series so there has to be something good about it, right? Let's talk about the plot really quickly. Ita, Itsuki, Itsuki, Hashima, and again, per forgive me for pronouncing that wrong if I did. Well, he's a writer with a strange obsession with little sisters. The story is primarily about his various struggles as a writer and his interaction with other writers, his editors, various artists, as well as his own little sister who doesn't, who no one really knows is a girl, but everyone thinks he's a boy. But yeah. Anyway, overall, there isn't really much to this series in terms of plot, but I find it pretty enjoyable to watch. It's a pretty interesting cooldown series. Not really something that you go out of your way to watch, but if you see an episode pop up, then take a peek, see what happens. Maybe you'll find it funny, maybe you won't. But you won't regret watching it. The animation's pretty solid, and the character designs are also pretty good. Overall, it's a kind of funny series, but if you have to drop anything on this list, then feel free to drop this one. And for our last original series of the day, we have My Girlfriend is a Fateful Virgin Bitch. Man, that title's a mouthful. Anyway, plot time. Shonozaki Haruka, forgive pronunciation, confesses to, confesses to his crush, Kosuki Akiho, and again, forgive pronunciation. And then he begins to realize her character is a little something difficult to handle. Basically, she's kind of a pervert who sees every interaction as being somewhat sexually motivated. So just when he confesses to her, she immediately begins trying to figure out what his favorite sexual positions are, as well as his own unique fetishes. She's someone who's difficult to deal with, especially with her mannerisms, as well as the various issues that pop up when she interacts with too many people at once. However... Haruka likes her. He's honestly trying to understand her, and the it is honestly cute to the true glow closer. It's a comedy series overall, so the main point of it is jokes is sex jokes and slapstick and stuff like that, but overall it's a pretty interesting series. On top of that, there are a wide variety of cute girls and a wide variety of different sexual jokes. Such as a such as a girl who often seems to do who often just seems to walk around and just give women orgasms orgasms just by being near them. It's an interesting character to say the least. Overall it's a pretty funny series, pretty simple, and if you're looking for just some quick laughs then I recommend this one. Well now, are you ready for the return of the Season 2 corner? Because here we go! Food War Season 3. I'm honestly happy to see this series taking off as much as it has, and I, and I really like the plotline that they use for this season, as someone who reads the manga. But I'll give you a bit of a warning for this series. Do not watch this on the empty synthetomic because you will be hungry and the food in this thing looks delicious. Are you ready for more food guessings? Because I am. Kick Eye Sensen Season 2. The original one was one of my favorite anime of 2015. And while it did get kind of screwed over in the last episode due to production issues, the episode itself came out pretty great. And I'm happy to see the series get another shot with the second season. And, well, yeah, have, get, they seem to be giving a lot more focus to the characters who didn't really get that much to do in the original series, in this original season. And overall, more Kekai Sense, and it's never really a bad thing. It's just more time with these great characters in this really fun, enjoyable, random world that we see. So let's have fun in Helheim's lot, shall we? Umaru Chan Season 2. No, I'm not saying that full title. A sequel to Umaru Chan, the internet's favorite little punching bag slash meme anime. I look forward to the further memes this series will create. Kino's Journey Season 2 Kino's Journey comes back after about 10 years with another anime run. Oh, for all the yes. I look forward to seeing some of the craziness Kino encounters on her journey with her talking motorcycle. 
It makes sense of context. And you know, she has a new traveling companion and a dog. All the yes. I look forward to seeing where she goes on her continued journeys. March Comes Alive Season 2. I didn't mention this series last year when it came out, mainly due to my own distaste for drama series. But after going back to watch after hearing so many people recommend it, I have to say I agree with them. It's a really great, enjoyable little series. So with this continued second season, look for I say watch it. Marathon the first season and come back and watch this one if you haven't. Just like I am doing. UQ Holder Season 2. Does anyone else remember when this was supposed to be just a quick little series to explain what happened after Negima? I remember those days and I kind of miss them. But the Negima sequel is still going on pretty strong and it's still pretty enjoyable. Not the best thing out there, but enjoyable nonetheless. It's a dumb series, but the action is good. And honestly speaking, the weakest part of this series is the connections it has to Negima. Honestly, whenever the Negima stuff starts popping up, I kind of tune out until it gets right back to the original stuff, which makes this series very interesting in its own right. So, yeah, dumb action, but enjoyable action. Let's get to it then. And finally, Garo the Vanishing Line, or Garo Vanishing Line. I don't know if there's a duh in there or not, it just it sounds better when I have a duh there. Technically, this is an original series based on the Garo franchise, but considering that there's already one Garo anime and a lot of the stuff in Garo is built upon from previous seasons, I'm putting it in the season 2 corner. So if you're a fan of Garo, I recommend you take a look at this one. If you don't know what the franchise is, take a peek, maybe you'll learn a bit or two. Then go back and watch the live action stuff. Fighting demons to save the day with bloody blood everywhere. Have fun. So this is a season with a lot of anime sequels that are all pretty good and a few good original series. There are a few disappointments such as Black Clover. I'm a bigger fan of the manga than the anime adaptation, but it's a whole other video. But overall, an enjoyable season with some good standout titles. And yeah, if you look for something to watch, you won't have you won't be without anime. So yeah. Let's just sit back and enjoy ourselves some anime in the end, shall we? Till next time, everybody.